Coming up in today's video, I'll take you through how I paint my 28mm World War II Italian Alpini from Warlord Games. In this video, we will discuss each step I take to get my Alpini miniature to pop, from the basic base colours to the eventual highlight. A huge thank you goes out to the wonderful crew at Warlord Games for providing me with these miniatures and for the constant support for the channel. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments section. Welcome to today's video. We're going to be looking at how I go about painting my World War II Alpini from Warlord Games. Now this set was sent to me courtesy of the awesome team at Warlord Games. So if you want to get your hands on some of these plastic models, you'll be able to go to their website at Warlord Games, select the region. So for me, I'm in the uh, rest of the world because I'm in Australia, but depending on where you are, you want to select your region, go to World War II. And then you can find your country. So obviously um, being Italian models, we want to check out the Italy range. And as you can see, the range is really extensive. World of Games has done a fantastic job of really trying to capture a lot of the different uh, Italian units that participated in the Second World War, as well as some very unique um, additional support options, etc. So we're interested in this set here. So this is the Italian army in black shirts. Um, so there's a three different types of um, infantry figures that you can paint out of them, but we're focusing on our penny. So what I want to do is I want to prime my model first. So I use Tamiya surface primer light gray, and then I use blue gray from Vallejo. And you can see here that uh, I've already painted the majority of the model, um, but I'm taking my time. I'm trying to ensure that I'm not painting over other areas that don't need this color. Now this color might also be a little bit too cartoony, depending on your taste. I know the actual uniform was probably a little bit more grayer uh, and, and less, a lot less blue, but I think blue looks really cool. So I'm going with blue. Uh, you'll have to judge me later. <laughs> uh, so for the ammo pouches, I use black. Again, this choice is a little bit incorrect. It was more of a dark green from what I believe, um, but dark green and black, you know, much of a muchness really so black will do me just nicely and i'm only painting his uh, ammo pouches and i believe the belt as well and obviously um, making sure i'm being really tidy here because i don't want to ruin that blue that i've just painted but if you do that's okay you can go back over the blue that's not a problem now we want to paint his boots in black grey. We also want to paint parts of the rifle or SMG depending on what your figure's got. LMG, in the metal parts in that, also the bayonet, so the holster for the bayonet or the scabbard. Um, we can paint that one in black grey. Also this guy's got an axe, so we can paint the metal part of the axe in that colour. So you get the drift. Anything that's metal we want to be painting in black grey if we can help it. Then for different parts of the webbing, so he's got a bag here. I'm using khaki for that. Um, and I believe there was another attachment slung around his other shoulder that needed a khaki. I'm also gonna paint the bag in khaki, the strap of his rifle in khaki. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's basically it. Um, you can see that I'm being really gentle because I don't want to go over. I hate going over work that you've already painted, unless obviously you're giving it a base, another base color or a highlight or layer. Now we want to paint the wooden objects. So for this, I'm painting them in flat earth. So that's the rifle, wooden parts of perhaps his axe or his shovel. Um, yeah, basically. It. Oh, I also like to do the handle of the bayonet in this color as well. That's really personal choice, obviously depending on what the bayonet looks like. A lot of the times the bayonet handles are a bit more gray or, or like a, a dark black, oh sorry, dark black, a light black. Uh, dark black, can't really get any more blacker, but you know what I mean. And then once that's done, I give it a wash in no oil, uh, but I thin it down using the Citadel thinners at a one to one ratio. So it's a mix between a wash and a glaze. The thick part of the wash is going to get in the recesses, but the lighter part of the wash is just going to darken it a touch, but it's not going to be to the point where your whole model's looking black. It's just going to darken everything only lightly, and then the, the pores are really just going to go in the recesses, which, which is what you want 
if you do pull and you've got a bit too much wash on there just dry your brush and you can get the rest of it off now we want to start layering using the base colors so this process is really straightforward we just want to go ahead and use blue gray and practically want to paint the model again the only difference here is we're ensuring that we're leaving the darker blue color that's going to be present after the wash in the creases in the folds of his uniform underneath the uniform so underneath his arm where the sunlight's not going to be showing or the, the light uh, and when you're trying to differentiate between different parts of the torso and the arms perhaps where the um, collar is uh, where it meets the rest of the uniform etc and then we want to go with a blue gray and pale blue highlight at a one-to-one -one ratio this part is our highlight you could even go even further than this if you wanted to you could do two parts and then two parts to one part of the highlight and then go one to one but we're going one to one straight into it and i'm just picking out all the highlighted edges or the hide the edges that need highlighting i should say um, i'm going between where two different parts of the uniform meet just adding a nice little line there you can see i'm just adding some lines where the uniform is going to be slightly creased um, but yeah really straightforward it's a really easy thing to paint then we want to go to khaki and we want to repeat the process on here so this guy's got another like a gas mask can so i'm not exactly sure i've also glued this in the wrong area <laughs> so i'm still getting used to plastic so i really do apologize um but yeah you you understand where i'm going with this um really copying the same process as the uniform so we're practically painting the whole thing again just leaving little bits of the darkened color to show between different areas and any folds and creases that might be present. Then to highlight that, I'm using khaki and stone gray at a one-to-one -one ratio, and you can see that I'm just capturing the very top of that particular bit of equipment and any other lines. The great thing about plastics, even though I'm not 100% sold on them yet, I still love my medals, I'm just, yeah obviously an old bogger that doesn't like change but um the good thing about these plastics is that the details are fantastic and the highlighting is made a lot easier because the details are very exaggerated so sometimes with metals you have to sort of highlight something that might not be as visible to show that it's there um, whereas these plastics seem to have all the detail there so you can really highlight it properly now for the black, black's always tricky to highlight. You wanna go with a German gray. Um, it's just a lighter black. So it's obviously a gray, dark, very, very dark gray, but it will really pop um, and just highlight the different parts of the strap and the bayonet, the, the pistol, um, sorry, pistol, the rifle pouches, magazine pouches, uh, and also the top of the hat. You can see that I'm just giving that a little line now I have to go to a completely different model for this because for some reason I lost the footage so to highlight sorry for the weapon I'm going back over the wooden parts with flat earth um, this is a 28 millimeter Dutch East Indies figure which will be shown in another video soon then to highlight the wood we go with flat earth and orange brown at a two to one ratio and I'm just adding in little lines here just to show sort of like the different wood grains, the different colors in, in the grains of wood. Um, and yeah, just not going too crazy, a little bit on the brush and just do a little bit at a time, just work it in there nicely. And then very for the very final part, I do flat earth at orange brown at a one-to-one -one ratio. You could even go just orange brown if you wanted to, if you're sick of doing all the mixings uh, and just doing the exact same process, just adding little tiny lines here and there just to really show that it's a wooden object with lots of wood grains. And the process is the same for a wooden handle uh, on his equipment, etc. Then for the insignia on his hat, I used old wood, obviously gave it the wash of no oil. Now I'm going back over it with old wood again. And then to highlight that, I use Iraqi sand. I really love the old wood Iraqi sand combo. Old wood can, sorry, Iraqi sand can be quite bright at times. Um, so if you need to mix the two together just to get a subtle highlight then you can definitely do that. Now I made a few mistakes with this and hopefully this reference sheet will fix those up for you guys. Um, for example the feathers for 
Officers are white, but for your general infantry are white. Also, different hats didn't have feathers. So you might have to do a little bit more research than I did. Uh, but other than that, I think they really did come out pretty well. Um, I'll be the first to admit, I don't really know much about the Italian army in the Second World War. And that's a fault on my part. I probably should have done a bit more research. Uh, I sort of just winged it on this, this one. Give it, you know, 10 minutes of looking on Google. Thought I had it. And then uh, I got corrected on social media. So, you know, it is what it is. It looks relatively good in my opinion. Actually, I think it looks really good. The models are great, honestly. So if you want to check them out, definitely hit up Warlord Games and go and get yourself a set. Um, you won't be disappointed. Hopefully this tutorial will help, especially if you want to go for a not as a realistic touch. I try and keep my videos realistic, but just a, a, a dull gray doesn't do it for me at this stage. Perhaps I'll do another video where I'll try and get it really historically accurate. If you want to see that actually, let me know in the comments. Um, obviously my main focus is our World War II, so if that's something you want to see, then yeah, I'm more than happy to do it. Huge thank you goes out to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. If you want to join their ranks, all of that stuff is in my video description in the About Me section on my YouTube channel. Um, but other than that, guys, I really do appreciate you, you watching. If you can give this video a like, that will really help you go out YouTube algorithm, show this video a bit better. And also, if you're new here, please don't uh, be afraid to give me a, a bit of a subscribe and hit that bell button. It really will be appreciated. Other than that, guys, I'm going to stop rambling now and I will catch you at the next one. Cheers. Bye.